What's going on? My name is Ryan. Welcome to another video from Better FPL, the place where we help you get better at FPL. Today, it's my team selection video for game week 13. As always, if you enjoy the content, hit that like button, hit subscribe as well. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers. It would be amazing if we can get there. What is amazing, though, is my game week 12 score if i can move myself out of the way game week 12 was an unbelievable game week for me i scored 92 points which was a game week rank of 28,560, and it was a big fat green arrow from around 260k all the way up to 51k i went into game week 12 thinking that i was going to get a red arrow I was talking about my you know, defense and my attack being issues. I was really worried about the Arsenal clean sheet, which happened. And I was also really worried about Alexander Isak absolutely destroying West Ham, which didn't happen. But let me tell you what did happen. Flecken got his first clean sheet of the season, nine points. Thank you very much. But Pedro Porro scored 14 points against Manchester City away from home. He kept a clean sheet. He scored a goal. He got two bonus points. This man is an absolute hero. And if I hadn't already got a vasectomy, I would name my fourth child. Hmm. I think Porro is probably better than Pedro. But I would name it after Pedro Porro. 14 points. Thank you for your service, my friend. He wasn't the only one who decided to go big. I had Saka, 13 points. Odegaard's back in the team. What do you know? Saka with a haul. Odegaard is back. Things we love to see. I also had Mo Salah. Rip if you do not have Salah in your team and you're clinging on to Haaland. He will return at some point. It just hasn't worked out. He has gone Double digit in game weeks. We can go back to the start, but let's start at game week eight. Double digit in game week eight. Double digit in game week nine. Nine points in game week 10. Double digit in 11. Double digit in 12. There's no stopping the Egyptian king. And I am very pleased that I got him into my team all those weeks ago. And then up front, Mateus Cunha. He doesn't care about XG. He doesn't care about XG. Football is played on grass, according to Mateus Cunha. And with an XGI of 0.82, he managed to get two goals and one assist. Again, a crucial decision if you went Strand Larsen over Mateus Cunha. There's a lesson to be learned there about always picking the talisman. I do sound a little bit too confident. Things can change. I can drop down the ranks, but I'm happy. 92 points. If you beat that score, let me know in the comments below. And I would like your FPL ID as well as evidence that you beat 92 points this week because I had an absolutely incredible week. Up to 51K, not going to take it for granted. I've played this game for enough years to know that things can turn around for the better or for the worse very, very quickly. So we'll take it. Great week. Let's move on to game week 13. All right, here we go. Game week 13. The goalkeeper rotation has worked out pretty well for me. I benched Verbruggen last week for his three points and I started Flecken for his nine. So a six point difference there in my favor. And most weeks it has worked out pretty well. Verbruggen, what I'm noticing is that Brighton haven't been keeping too many clean sheets, but he has been getting quite a few save points. It Against Southampton, it kind of feels like they're either going to clean or they're not. That sounds obvious, but what I mean is that I don't think he's going to get too many save points in this game. It is at home, which is good for Brighton, but they are a team who like to attack, and I'm never too confident in the Brighton clean sheet. There's some talk about potentially doubling up with someone like Van Heck or even Lewis Dunk if you trust his minutes. I'm not that confident on doubling up on the Brighton defense. I'm happy that I've got Verbruggen. Flecken's there on the bench, and I think this is probably how my team is going to line up with goalkeepers from now, maybe for the next six to eight weeks. I think Verbruggen's fixtures are really nice. In defense, I've got Pedro Porro, Levi Colwell, and Gvardiol. On the bench, I've got Konza and Mosquera. Konza should be okay. I don't know whether he'll start. He was on the bench in the Champions League game. That doesn't really bode too well for a start away against Chelsea. And in reality, what am I expecting in that game? One, two points I'd be very happy with for Conso. Mosquera's out for the season. He's dropped to 3.9. That has really broken my heart. 3.9, you're not meant to lose value on your 4 million defender, but it has happened and he's not going to get that money back at any point this season. So Mosquera's got to go at some point. 
do I need to deal with him now? That That's the question. Is that the most pressing issue on my team? I don't think so. I don't think he's going to drop any further than 3.9. Uh, Esri Conso, again, not great fixtures. Aston Villa have good defensive stats, but they always find a way to concede because they concede big chances. Ezra Konsa doesn't have much of a goal threat either, so I'm not that pleased to have Konsa in the team. I'd advise against buying him. I'd advise against buying any Aston Villa defender right now. As I said, they just don't keep clean sheets. But I think the biggest issue in my team is Josko Gvardiol. If you watch that game in the Champions League against Feyenoord, he was at fault for at least two of the goals, and he did not cover himself in glory against Spurs as well. He's played terribly in recent weeks, and if it wasn't for the injury crisis that City have defensively, I think that there'd be a chance, potentially, that Gavardiol would be benched. As it stands, I think he'll continue to start, but that City defence, we've all heard the stats about how many big chances they're conceding, and I think for his price... It's a defender that I don't want in my team anymore. They're not going to keep clean sheets. It's Liverpool away from home, and the fixtures beyond that aren't great either. And I think I'd be relying on attacking returns from Guardiola, which he's more than capable of. But there are other teams who have better chances of clean sheets with defenders who have an equal chance of attacking returns to Guardiola. And I think that's probably the most pressing issue in my team that I need to deal with. And I think that's probably where my transfer is going to go this week. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. In midfield, these four, I'm very pleased with Mbumo, Saka, Palmer, Salah. A few people talking about selling Mbumo. Don't do it this week. It's Leicester at home. If he's the most pressing transfer that you've got in your team, then you must have an incredible team. I would not sell Mbumo at home against Leicester. You might be thinking that you need the money to go to Saka this week, but Mbumo at home to Leicester versus Saka away to West Ham. I don't think there's too much in that. Yes, there's a value question. Saka's going up, Mbumo's going down. So maybe you need to pull the trigger on that if value is tight. But for me, I'd sit on Mbumo and I would look to move off him next week if that is the way your team is set up. Saka, Palmer, Salah, there's a choice for captaincy there. At the moment, my captain's armband is on Palmer. The question I've got on Palmer is, is his fitness? I think he's carrying a little bit of a knock. And the more I think about that, the more it pushes me to Salah. City conceding big chances. That left-hand side of their defense with Guardiol, very vulnerable to and susceptible to making mistakes. Uh, of course, Liverpool, great form at the moment. Salah on penalties, very good with bonus points. Gets one return, max bonus points. So Salah feels like a safe option. I think Palmer has more of a ceiling in this game. But I also think that there's more of a chance that Salah comes away with one return. Palmer could come away with two or zero. And I'm not entirely sure which side of the fence I want to go on there. Do I want to chase the upside with Palmer or do I just want to go for the safety with Salah? So at the moment, the armband's on Palmer. I think it's a good fixture against Aston Villa. They have that high line. We saw what Palmer did to Brighton's high line a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Nicholas Jackson as well has profited from that high line against you know uh, Brighton and West Ham as well earlier on in the season. So I think Palmer could do very well. It's a good fixture. The one question, as I said, is that fitness. Villa did have that nil-all draw with Juventus in the Champions League. Again, they didn't really rotate March. There's a common theme here for Unite Emery's team post Champions League and post midweek football, they have struggled. So I think I can see Chelsea winning that game 2-1, 2-0. And I can see Palmer coming away with a couple of returns. But also at the same time, I don't have the same trust in Palmer's fitness, same trust in Chelsea overall as I do for Liverpool and, of course, for Salah. So it's between those two. Uh, I can see the temptation for Saka in Bumo as well. Ja Pedro, I can see the temptation for. But I think the question marks over those guys are too significant to consider really captaining them. So for me, it's between Palmer and Salah. At the moment, it's on Palmer. And then I've got Brendan Johnson on the bench. Now, I don't really know whether he'll start. I haven't looked into the Spurs fans forum. I haven't really looked into uh, you know, greater detail on why Brennan Johnson was benched. I think it was a tactical decision to try and get Kuliseski on that right-hand side, Madison in the middle, and really try and take it to City in the midfield. And I think with, you know, I, I have heard Spurs fans say that with Brennan Johnson in the team, in build-up, they're kind of reduced to 10 men. He's good at, at running into space getting on the end of things, but he is uh, a little bit of a liability in the build-up phase. And I can see why he was benched against City. The question is, 
Is he going to be benched again this week at home against Fulham? Now, I'm not taking that risk. I've got him on the bench, and I would like to move Brennan Johnson to Semenyo when I have the free transfers available. So I've got Brennan Johnson on the bench. I'm not entirely sure whether he starts against Fulham. He's on my bench, so I'm not really too concerned whether he starts or not, and he is going to be a transfer out for me in a couple of weeks. Up front, speaking of transfers, I've already made one. I went very early. I went on Saturday before the Game Week 12 deadline, or before Game Week 12 was over. Uh, I brought João Pedro in, and I sold Raul Jimenez. He was going down. Pedro was going up. Pedro might even go up again. 0.2 rise in one week would be insane. And I've used the free transfer on João Pedro when I probably could have just benched Raul Jimenez and started Brennan Johnson. But as I said, there is that concern about Brennan Johnson. Will he start? Will he be benched? I don't need to worry about that question now because we've got João Pedro in the team. He was someone that I wanted in eventually anyway. And the way I kind of saw it was João Pedro is a player that I will want. He's got Southampton at home this week. There's an opportunity to buy him for 5.5. If he returns against Southampton, he's probably going to be 5.7, 5.8, 5.9 by the time I've got the free transfer available to get him in. And if he stays fit, big if, he could be a season keeper. So I saw the opportunity to get someone who's potentially a season keeper at 5.5 ahead of a good fixture against Southampton, and I took it with both hands. That does mean I'm going to make another transfer, but it's going to be for a minus four. So this will be my first minus four of the season. Haven't taken a hit thus far. And as I discussed last week, for me taking a hit, I really, really need to be convinced that the player I'm bringing in is going to outscore the player that I would play otherwise by more than four points. And looking at my team last week, I wasn't convinced of that. But looking at my team this week, is there a player that I can get rid of and a player that I can bring in who will outscore that player by more than four points this week and will continue to outscore them in weeks to come? And the answer to that, ladies and gentlemen, is yes. Josko Gvardiol, he, the time has come for him to leave the team. He is clearly a player that I need to move on, both because of his individual performances, but also because of City's performances collectively as a team. There are no clean sheets coming this week. What do I see his returns likely to be? I think he'll probably come away with one point. I can see City conceding at least two goals in that game. Take away the one for the... Um, concession of the second goal, one appearance point, one point. I think that's kind of where he's going to land. He might get an attacking return. I could have egg on my face, but the chances of that are quite low. And if that does happen, it doesn't really matter because he's a player that I want to get rid of. And the pretty obvious absence from my team is an Arsenal defender. I've only got one Arsenal player in my team. Most people have one, if not two, Arsenal defenders. Last week, I got away with the clean sheet against Forrest. Yes, they got it, but I had Pedro Porro, who outscored Saliba and Gabriel combined, so it was okay. I'm not expecting Pedro Porro to get 14 points every week. I'd love it, don't get me wrong, but I'm not expecting it. So what I think I need to do is to count my, um, or to say that I was lucky, or what, what is that saying? I'm not counting my chickens, but to, to realize and recognize that I've been very, very lucky with not owning an Arsenal defender thus far. I didn't have them for Leicester and Southampton when they conceded in both of those games, and I obviously didn't have them last week when they cleaned, but I got a lot of points from Pedro Porro to cover it. So this week, I think I need to address the no Arsenal defense issue in my team. Guardiola is going to leave, but for which Arsenal defender? Now, the answer is quite obvious. It's Gabriel or it's Urian Timber. Gabriel went off with some discomfort, it was described as, in that Champions League game. We haven't had an update from Arteta at the time of recording. We might get one. We might. How much truth there is in that update, we don't know. We might get a, a, a leak or some update from outside of Arteta or from outside of the club directly. And that would be ideal. I would like to have confirmation because if Gabriel is fit and if he is declared good to go for this weekend, then Gabriel is going to be my transfer in. It'll be Gvardiol to Gabriel, no questions asked. However, if Gabriel is not fit, if we don't get an update, if we don't hear anything between now and the deadline, then I will sell Gvardiol for Timber. I've been so impressed with Timber's positioning, with the way he contributes to the build-up play, the effect of Odegaard 
On that right-hand side of Arsenal's attack, Odegaard, Saka and Timber were combining really well against Nottingham Forest and also in the Champions League against Sporting Lisbon, Sporting de Club Portugal, I should say. And I think that right-hand side of Arsenal's attack is really humming at the moment with Timber at the heart of that. So he's a player I really want to get on. I can see more attacking returns coming. He got uh, an assist in the Champions League. He had a goal disallowed as well in the Premier League last game week. So Timber is going to be my transfer in if we don't hear anything on Gabriel or if we hear that he's not fit. So that's what my move will be. Gvardiol out for Timber or Gabriel. It will be for a minus four. You can see the minus four as Gvardiol to an Arsenal defender, or you can see the minus four as Raul Jimenez to uh, Jao Pedro or even a minus four to play Jao Pedro over Brennan Johnson. Does Jao Pedro outscore Raul Jimenez or Brennan Johnson by more than four points this week? I think so. Does Yuri and Timber or Gabriel outscore Gvardiol by more than four points this week? I also think so. And then I, I'm quite pleased with the team from there. Minus four, not ideal, but I got 92 points last week. I'm going to cash in some of those points, make the team a little bit better, and we move forward. Let me know what transfers you're planning. And also as well, tomorrow, Friday in the morning, UK time, Friday night, Australian Daylight Savings time. We are going to be streaming, as always we do on a Friday, the Better FPL show where me and Lee are going to be talking about all the hottest topics ahead of the Game Week 13 deadline, as well as our team reveals. So make sure you tune in for that. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.